Hello everyone and welcome to Computer Tech TV. It's me, Rick Arter here, and I just wanted to clear up some things as far as the temperature monitoring for AMD CPUs. Now, I know this covers the Phenom 2, more than likely the original Phenoms, and um, the new bulldozers, they're kind of iffy. Uh, I've heard some of the temp sensors on there aren't quite correct, but since there isn't many people who are purchasing the bulldozers, this one's mainly going to cover uh, the Phenom 2 CPUs because they still seem to be the most popular on the AMD lineup. Now, I did some research and when you're looking at your temperatures for the AMD CPUs, there's two things that you're going to see. You're going to see your CPU core temperatures and then you're going to see your CPU socket temperatures. Now they're not going to be called that, they'll be called um, just CPU or TMPIN or core. So now here's what uh, you need to look for. Now as far as the temperature you see in BIOS from what I've read, uh, the temperature you see in BIOS is the CPU socket temperature. So that's why you always notice that the CPU socket temperature or the temperature in BIOS will always be higher than what your core temperatures say. Now here I have the AMD Overdrive software open and let me zoom in here for you guys. Okay, you can see up there we're reading at 43, 44 degrees Celsius. This is pretty much what my BIOS on the Gigabyte uh, FXA UD5 or the 990 FX chipset, that's pretty much what this one reads in BIOS and with AMD Overdrive. Now at first I was kinda thinking, oh no I've been going by the wrong temperatures because I was going by these core temperatures right here on core temp 1.0 as well as the core temperatures here for hardware monitor but after doing some research basically I found out that there are two different sensors that you're looking at um, the temperature here in AMD overdrive is your socket temperature which from what I read is always about five to seven maybe more degrees Celsius higher than what it actually is and this depends on your airflow because obviously the CPU socket is not the cores it's the socket itself and then on the uh, TMP sensors here on a hardware monitor your first one here is going to be your motherboard now this is probably going to be different for all motherboards but as far as the 990 FXA UD5 and probably all the ones in that gigabyte series uh, your first TMP IN0 that's going to be your motherboard temperature the second one is going to be your CPU socket temperature and then the third one is going to be your north bridge temperature which technically the north bridge is not really the north bridge like we were you know we used to see on the 775 platforms and all the other ones where the integrated memory controller was not on the board it's now on the CPU itself but still nonetheless that is the chipset temperature so basically what you want to go by here and as you can see these temperatures are quite a bit different so you're reading 43 here and then over here you're reading 38 so and you, it's kind of strange because this one right here, which is your north bridge, is actually the same as what your CPU socket temperature. But if I load it up under Prime 95, this uh, 44 degrees Celsius here will shoot up past 50, while this one stays quite a bit lower. So, basically what you want to go by is, um, you want to keep all these CPUs for the Phenom 2 range as low as possible because they like to run cooler. So from what I've heard, if you go over 60 degrees Celsius on some of these CPUs on the core temperatures, they'll, it'll cause quite a bit of instability. So what you want to do is keep your core temperatures, which are going to be uh, not this temperature, but when you're running this right here, let me zoom in again, this right here, and for some reason core temp 1.0 only gives you one temperature sensor for some reason but not a big deal because both of my cores run exactly the same but this is your core temperature right here you want to keep this see, and you don't really so much want to go by the TJ Maxx because um, some CPUs the actual highest temperature that they're rated to is not really what you want to go by I mean sure it can run up to that if you're not overclocking but when you're overclocking the lower temperature is going to help you with stability and higher overclocks so you want to have this as low as possible obviously and this is the temperature you want to go by um, 
sure, it's it's nice to have your CPU socket temperature lower, but you can actually lower that by getting better case cooling, having a, a fan blowing directly towards the CPU socket itself. So technically, you're going to see a little bit higher temperatures here if you're running a um, tower style style cooler versus a downward blowing onto the motherboard style cooler. But yeah, so basically you want to go by your core temps here, which you can see in hardware monitor. And I actually read somewhere that uh, core temp is one of the ones that AMD actually recommends using. And hardware monitor and core temperature read pretty much exactly the same all the time. So those are the two that I use. And like I said, when I first started this, uh, I fired up AMD Overdrive just to check it out. And yeah, my temperatures are way higher. So I did some research, um, mainly on overclock.net because that's the site I go to. I recommend you guys all check it out and uh, you know sign up for a membership. It's free, and uh, you know see what's all on the site. And you can do this without signing up. I just say that just because the members there are great. So if you have questions, you can post them and stuff like that. But back to the subject of temperatures. You want to go by the core temperatures. You want to keep them under 60 degrees Celsius. Obviously, the lower the, the better. And from what I've heard, the integrated memory controller and pushing voltage to these CPUs, they're very hard to kill unless you deliberately just pump the maximum amount of voltage that you possibly can with not enough cooling. But really, these, these are some tough CPUs here. So go by your core temperatures, guys. Um, obviously, like I said, you can play around a little bit, try to get your socket temperatures a little bit lower. If you have a case that has airflow or cooling from the backside of the motherboard, that will definitely help. But... Uh, go by the core temperatures. Um, these are two good programs. There's also Speed Fan. There's a few other programs out there, but Core Temp and CPU ID Hardware Monitor are the ones that I use, and they work great. And they're also free programs. You guys can find them online. Just Google them. So uh, that concludes this video, guys. If there is anything that I didn't mention or I forgot, please leave a comment below. And if you guys have any further questions or anything you'd like to say, please leave it in the comment below or send me a personal message. And be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. So you guys all have a great day and lots more videos to come.